From the murky waters of the sportsman's paradise, stories emerge. Stories of the generations of people who have shared in the bounties of the land. Stories of communities that have persevered through natural disasters. Stories of the abundance of fish, wildlife, and adventures that create an ecosystem rich in diversity. And from the silted banks of the mighty Mississippi to the soggy marsh bottoms, from the tops of the towering pine forest to the depths of the salty gulf, human and animal have shared in this fortune for centuries. Enjoy these stories as told by outdoor journalists who travel across our state documenting the adventure, sportsmanship, and heritage that make us Bayou Wild. Welcome to Bayou Wild TV. It's a beautiful day today and we've got a great show lined up for you. First, we're going to have our installment of The Captain's Wife. You're going to meet Kristen Moran. Captain Chris Moran's wife, she's quite an outdoors gal herself. Yeah, they live down in Port Fouchon, but they hunt in Mississippi. She's an avid huntress. She's also a mom and she has a lot to do with the marina, so you'll learn about her. We're also going to go out in the kayaks. The kayak fishing craze has really taken off and uh, I myself have a kayak. We're going to go out with Captain Eric Muhabarik. We're going to get into the Hobies, kind of introduce you to the ins and outs of the kayaks and how we fish out of them. And prepare to get your mouth watering. We're going to take you back to the White Oak Plantation for a visit with our friend Chef John Fulce. This week, Trout Rex coming up on Bayou Wild TV. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to go on to my plate like that with some of that. There you go. This is the float. This is the float. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then I'm going to let's go in with the fish. I'm going to put yeah. the fish right on top of it like this. Here's how I guarantee my crawfish tastes great every time. I use what the pros use. I use Louisiana Fish Fry brand seafood boil. Why do the pros use Louisiana Fish Fry Seafood Boil? Because, guys, it has more herbs and spices. It has a much better flavor. It's easy, just pour and boil. Louisiana Fish Fry brand Seafood Boil. Find the yellow bag, and pour and boil for great crawfish every time. In 1967, Dutch Stogner realized his dream to run his own meat market. Fifty years and three generations later, Double D and the Stogner family still operate with Dutch's original commitment to quality. Pick up some Double D sausage today and share your good times with us on Facebook. Hi, I'm Donnie Rouse. There are a lot of different reasons to shop at Rouse's. It's the people. Everybody that works here is just so nice. Our stores get delivery seven days a week. They have such a wide variety at Rouse's. Everything's in stock. I mean, everything. We use Rouse family recipes and ingredients found right here in the store. It's the food. Rouse's food tastes like homemade. And they're local. Like us. We also have great prices. That's the difference Rouse's makes. Welcome back to Bayou Wild TV. We're going to introduce you to a new segment we have called The Captain's Wife. Now many of you have heard of Moran's Marina down in Port Fouchon, Louisiana. Chris Moran, the owner of Cajun Made Fishing Charters. We're going to introduce you to his wife, Kristen, and get the unique perspective of what it's like to live with the captain. A fishing rodeo at a marina seems like an unlikely place for two people to meet and develop a relationship, but that's exactly how it happened for Kristen Fagan and Captain Chris Moran. Apparently that's what kept his attention was seeing the hunting pictures and stuff on Facebook and I guess he just thought it was, oh it's cute, I kill every now and then. And he came, I think it was the Super Bowl or something, 2012, and he walked in my parents' house and he just saw, I guess you can say the dead animals everywhere, like we just, it's what we do as a family and he realized the extent of how much we hunt. And then I started telling stories, he started asking questions, and I started telling stories, and he yeah, asked a little bit more, and I said, it, I've been hunting by myself since eight, and he's like, oh, like, you seriously hunt? Yes, I seriously hunt. There's a high probability he broke it off, like, recently, when he was growing, because it does, you don't even have a spike on the other side, like, it's clean cut, going, or he can have a hormone deficiency where it's just not ever gonna grow. Tell me what your parents used to do, because you're such a killer. I get three bullets. That would be if I shot early and something really monster came out later on. I still had one, and because I was scared of the dark, so I would never leave the stand without a bullet in my gun. So that means I couldn't come home with more than two deer. So that was like a safety thing. 
they had to figure out a way to control. I'd be in a stand for 30 minutes and shoot. And then someone else with bigger would walk out, I don't want to shoot. And then someone else with bigger would walk out, I don't want to shoot. So they figured that three bullets was a good, a good number. That way, if I shot early and something really nice came out later or bigger, I had one more bullet and then you knew I wasn't leaving without my third in the gun. So that's kind of how they put me on a, on a leash, I guess. Kristen met Chris while working with her father. After hitting it off, they stayed in touch when she moved to Texas. The two went to a concert together and soon realized it was their first date. First of all, how do you ask you to marry you? Here. Actually, it was my birthday and I was hunting. I had killed my first exotic bull, bull kill. Um, we got back, my brother was on his way and they kept prolonging cutting my cake and I couldn't figure out why. I just wanted to have a beer and cut my cake and relax. And um, while I was in the stand, apparently he had run to town and got, I guess like a, a little wood pin where you can ride in a, in a piece of wood. And one of our guys, they went cut a tree down and they made a little box. And when I looked at the top of the box, I saw it said, will you marry me? And I, I was, apparently I asked him, are you, are you serious? Like, this is serious? I, I was just totally caught off guard. It isn't easy being a captain's wife. The biggest challenge, time. You have no summer life. You have no, even more than just the summer, because people call for Thanksgiving. People's holidays are our work days. So Fourth of July is busy. Like I said, Thanksgiving, somebody called for charter. New Year's people want to go fit. So it's not our holidays. We don't really get off because that's when we make our money. And you don't really plan because he has to reschedule. Like he'll have a bad day, like he can't take somebody out, so you gotta reschedule a month later on. And <laughs> It's enjoyable because he enjoys it, but it's crazy and it's tiring and it's dirty and it's stinky. It's stinky, it's madness, it really is. And to see his face when he gets off a charter boat, it's just, that's his happy place. Like, no matter how horrible the day was, how rough it was, how hot it was, how cold it was, his face, when it gets off, is just lit up. And for his customers, especially when his customers had a great day, it's, it's unexplainable. She comes from a really good family, and it's, it's close-knit, and uh, with the Marine and everything, we, we endure a lot. And, and, and I knew that, and I think we both knew that, with everything that we go through together in the marina and how hard we work together, we knew we could do it. After our first year of marriage, we had went to the camp. I think we stayed 11 days. He had went back and forth to work, but we 11 days together and just, just a peace and quiet. Because people don't realize, in the morning his phone will blow up at 3 some in the morning, people asking about bait, what kind of bait, where to fish, what's the weather like, what he thinks the weather's gonna be like, will it change, it, it just blows up. So the time we do get together during work time, like you say, it's not together. It's a few minutes here, a few minutes there. And then when it's hunting season, it kind of calms down and it's just us. And we get to kind of catch up on the rest of the year of what actually happened. In the fall of 2017, Chris and Kristen added a new challenge to their already busy lifestyle, parenthood. It's, I've done a lot of incredible, been a part of a lot of the unbelievable experiences on the boat. Uh, you know, extraordinary fish catches and scary situations and all that. But when, whenever he popped out, uh, that was by far the most exciting experience of my life. I mean, and, it, and since that point in time, it's, uh, I ju you just look at everything totally different. And I'm not, you know, I'm preaching to the choir. Everybody that has a child already knows this. You don't think about anything about yourself anymore. You know, think about everything that you do to create for him in the future. He was always soft-hearted, like a big-hearted person, but now he's even softer. I think he uh, he totally enjoys spending time with his son and he helps so much. You may be wondering what first time fatherhood is like for a captain in their late 40s. You know, there's so many things. Myself and everybody that's avid about hunting and fishing, we have so much to give to, to a, a, a little boy or a girl. You know, you just look forward to that. Kristen and Chris are looking forward to all the opportunities they will have teaching Kasten about the world of hunting and fishing. But what if he's not interested? <laughs> what are you going to do? How are you going to feel? How are you going to If he wasn't interested it's in hunting or fishing? <laughs> it's, not, it's not likely, but just saying. In the 
What a chance. Oh, I, I'll have to cross that bridge when I get to it. <laughs> I'll have to cross that bridge. We just met Kristen Moran and learned about her adventures, hunting, fishing, being a busy mom, going from the woods to the water. And we're going to meet a lot more of the captain's wives. But coming up next, the kayak craze going on. Stay with us. we got that coming up. You know, the thing I like about kayak fishing is it puts you at the ground level with the fish. Um, you know, fishing to me is one of the last great sports that connects you with nature. Um, that connection with nature, it's at its peak when you're kayak fishing. If you hunt or fish, you really need to check out 20echo.com. It's an app that you can take on the water or on the hunt. It logs all the information. It's got the date, the GPS location, tons of information to log your catch or kill. It's a great thing to have. Check it out at 20echo.com and you'll see it more on Bayou Wild TV. Find out if alternative treatment is the answer to your pet's health issues. Contact Dr. G at VetNaturally.com. Coming up a little later, we'll show you how to make trout wrecks with Chef John Foltz. It ain't Mardi Gras season all the time, but it is around White Oak Plantation. It's a carnival dish. Stay with us. In 1967, Dutch Stogner realized his dream to run his own meat market. Fifty years and three generations later, Double D and the Stogner family still operate with Dutch's original commitment to quality. Pick up some Double D sausage today and share your good times with us on Facebook. Here's how I guarantee my crawfish tastes great every time. I use what the pros use. I use Louisiana Fish Fry brand seafood boil. Why do the pros use Louisiana Fish Fry seafood boil? Because, guys, it has more herbs and spices. It has a much better flavor. It's easy, just pour and boil. Louisiana Fish Fry brand seafood boil. Find the yellow bag, pour and boil for great crawfish every time. If you ask many Gulf Coast anglers what the fastest growing sport on the water is, you're likely to hear them say kayak fishing. The paddlecraft fishing craze has undoubtedly made huge waves on the fishing community within the last decade. And many would argue that Louisiana is on the top of the list when it comes to fueling the growing kayak fishing industry. A true testament is the annual Ride the Bull Extreme Kayak Rodeo which for nearly 10 years has attracted hundreds of paddlecraft anglers to Grand Isle, Louisiana, and has earned the title as the largest kayak fishing tournament in the world. I guess it just hit a nerve. Everybody liked it and it just caught on. But now, first came up with the idea, we were worried nobody show up. First year, 75. And then it just kind of blew up after year three. So I, it's kind of like Sturgis for, for kayaks. The popularity of the sport also attracted worldwide attention in December of 2016 when Hobie Cat International brought anglers from 20 different countries to Lafouche Parish to compete in the Hobie Fishing World Championships. It's a great, I'm meeting people from Brazil, China, all over. To see them here and know they're going out to fish in those little boats, a lot of great people here from all over. We're having a great time. We chose the area of southern Louisiana here, Leeville and Pouchon. Um, because it's, it's a perfect layout for kayak fishing. You've got miles and miles of marsh, plenty of fish. We want this competition to keep getting better and better. The international anglers are now traveling to different waters, learning new techniques, learning new fish. They'll take that home and they'll apply it to their home waters. And so a unique thing about kayak fishing is we get a very diverse angler. Uh, this weekend was awesome. I caught a lot of big fish. They're, Fishery here is just awesome. I really enjoy my stay here. To compete against this level uh, of kayak angler, uh, these anglers are from around the world. Each one of them won some sort of a championship or event to get here. And um, 
to win at home against this this uh, this group of guys is just such an honor. And not only did it attract the attention of kayak fishermen, it also perked the ears of other well-known competitive anglers. You know, the thing I like about kayak fishing is it puts you at the ground level with the fish. Um, you know, fishing to me is one of the last great sports that connects you with nature. Um, that connection with nature, it's at its peak when you're kayak fishing. To get at the ground level, face to face with the fish, to access water I can't access any other way. That's what excites me about kayak fishing. So a lot of our audience has expressed curiosity and interest in kayak fishing simply yeah. for the fact that it's sort of new and it's affordable. So we're going to be doing a lot more fishing likely coming up in the next few months, maybe a, a catfish trip. Catfish trip, maybe some bass trips. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it, 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 and that's the whole thing, you know, especially with the price of bay boats and flat skiffs and gasoline, gasoline mm -hmm. and insurance and maintenance on those things. You know, uh, working folks can save a couple dollars and yeah, it's, it's a top of the line kayak. You're going to, you're going to pay a good amount for it, but you know, it's a one time purchase. So it's not necessarily the best fishing day. The water's pretty dirty. It's a little bit high. But, you know, when you're just getting acclimated to the kayaks, it's good to go out and just paddle around in them and get comfortable in it, and that's kind of what we're doing today. Yeah. It also sets you in a great state of mind, also. It's very relaxing. Get you away from the hustle and bustles of the city. No motors, no problems. <laughs> I got a little one! Well, you work up an appetite when you're paddling around in those kayaks, so we're going to take some trout and bring it to Chef John Foles. He's going to teach us how to make trout rex coming up. Here's how I guarantee my crawfish tastes great every time. I use what the pros use. I use Louisiana Fish Fry brand seafood boil. Why do the pros use Louisiana Fish Fry seafood boil? Because guys, it has more herbs and spices. It has a much better flavor. It's easy, just pour and boil. Louisiana Fish Fry brand seafood boil. Find the yellow bag, and pour and boil for great crawfish every time. In 1967, Dutch Stagner realized his dream to run his own meat market. Fifty years and three generations later, Double D and the Stagner family still operate with Dutch's original commitment to quality. Pick up some Double D sausage today and share your good times with us on Facebook. And welcome back to Bayou Wild with Chef John Foltz again for another one of his tasty, innovative cooking recipes. You know, John, speckled trout, yeah. number one target on the inshore coastal fisherman's <laughs> radar. <laughs> but so many it. ways to cook it. People are looking for different ways, though. Uh, no, no, absolutely. And, you know, even, uh, even uh, when I think about cooking fish, I never say, well, I'm going to cook this fish that way or this fish that way. Uh, although fish do present themselves in ways that they should go on the grill. They should mm -hmm. go just in a, in a saute pan. They should go into a deep fryer, and that's what people expect. What I like to do is give them the unexpected. Right, and thinking the, out the box. Yeah, thinking <laughs> out of the box. We were talking about uh, yellowfin tuna mm -hmm. just uh, a little while ago and uh, going out there and getting that beautiful tuna and coming back in. But every species presents itself to the chef or the home cook in a way that they just want to experiment and do some fabulous food. So what I'm doing with speckled trout, as we know, I think the least you do with it, the less you do with it, the better it's going to be. A lot of natural flavor. You just want that natural flavor. We were also talking about it's a good fish for freezing as well, because mm -hmm. you can certainly, it's one of those fish that will adapt well to freezing, and you can come back and, and use it when you have a big catch. So what I'm going to do here is just put a little oil in the skillet. Again, not too much. I just want, I don't want to, I'm not deep frying here. I just want to coat the bottom of my skillet. Now, on the speckled trout, we just have some small pieces here, which is perfect for a single plate. And again, uh, 
They don't come pre-season, so you want to kind of uh, just a little bit of your, your favorite. And of course, I'm always, as a chef, I'm putting the three things that I love most on my fish, and that's just a little salt, a little pepper, a little granulated garlic, just to kind of give it that wonderful flavor. And of course, the, uh, um, uh, the flour is done the same way. I just want to kind of give it that nice little pat. And on the flour, I'm not dipping this in milk or water. Mm -hmm. I just want the natural moisture of the fish to pick up that little coating. And I want to shake off all of that excess because I just want that little- oh, Lightly battered. Lightly battered, but, mm -hmm. but the lightness of that batter also gives the fish a nice crunch on the outside. Mm -hmm. It's almost like cooking, people say, why do you cook fish skin on? Well, you cook it skin on because you want that crackling on the outside. The flour does the same thing in, uh, in fish like this beautiful speckled trout. So again, shaking off all the excess. It's seasoned, the flour's seasoned, and I'm going just down into a little bit uh, vegetable oil right there. And I'm not going to move the fish, I'm not going to play around with it. I just want the fish to sit there and do its thing because that's where the Christmas is going to come from. Mm -hmm. That flower is just going to go ahead and give it that beauty. And I would recommend this kind of a technique in cooking to, to most of your fish. I mean, uh, most of your, at least your thin bodied fish like this is the perfect way uh, to, uh, uh, to, to, to cook them. Now I'm going to just kind of see what we look like on the other side. It looks good to me. And you see that, good. see those little dark spots mm -hmm. there? That's coming about from the fact that and you see it's, all, it's almost stiff and crispy, right? Uh, the inside of this fish is so moist and juicy, you just know when you break it, it's gonna kind of drip. Oh, you're making people <laughs> Kind of drip that natural, <laughs> my God, the flavor of the inside of that fish, but it's the outside that's gonna make this fish spectacular, right? And again, you can put, by the way, use herbs. I mean, a lot mm -hmm. of guys like you, your onion, celery, bell pepper, and all of those kind of things, well, go ahead and use them. That's not a big deal. Now, once this is, cooked, what I like to do is to take it, I want the drippings of the pan to be my sauce as well. So this is called Trout Rex. Look, Mardi Gras is all year long for us. Uh, right? I agree come? with that. And this is one of my top uh, uh, fish dishes in the restaurant. Well, we're going to let that go just a little bit longer, and then we're going to come back and That's we're right. going to really dress it up. We're just going to let it go, and when we come back, we're going to go ahead and throw the rest of our uh, flavors in here, okay? The best is yet to come. Stay <laughs> with us on Bayou Wild TV. Here's how I guarantee my crawfish tastes great every time. I use Louisiana Fish Fry brand seafood boil. Why do the pros use Louisiana Fish Fry seafood boil? Because the flavor is so good. Louisiana Fish Fry seafood boil has more garlic, onion, paprika, lemon, and not too much salt. Louisiana Fish Fry brand seafood boil. Find the yellow bag and pour and boil for great crawfish every time. In 1967, Dutch Stagner realized his dream to run his own meat market. Fifty years and three generations later, Double D and the Stagner family still operate with Dutch's original commitment to quality. Pick up some Double D sausage today and share your good times with us on Facebook. Well, with Chef John Foltz at White Oak Plantation, where we're doing trout wrecks, where it's Mardi Gras every day, right? <laughs> well, it, it is, and we have our fish nice and crispy, and I point that out again. Mm -hmm. It's almost stiff, but so juicy on the inside. Now, I call it uh, trout wrecks because it's patterned after one of the Mardi Gras kings, obviously. I use the same drippings in the pot that I cooked the fish in, and I'm putting a little green onion, onion garlic, right down in there like that. And then I'm gonna put about a half of the, you see the colors I'm using? So I have a little gold, a little mm -hmm. green. You with me? Uh, I'm with and, you. And of course, this is uh, this is uh, just a uh, squash. So I'm just trying to throw that around a little bit. Now I'm gonna go in with uh, a little, t uh, what do you think of that crab? I don't know, that, I don't right? know if I wanna give you this. <laughs> I'm not sure, I might have other plans for this. Why don't you just go ahead and, uh, because, right, because these, right. vegetables are, these vegetables are pretty much uh, cooking. Now I need mm -hmm. a little bit of this chicken stock. Just pour about a little bit in there, that's plenty. And then give me my herbs. I have a little basil, a little thyme. You can just sprinkle some of them in there, not too much. And I don't want to overcook the crab meat. I just want to wilt the green and uh, gold squash. Now I need my purple. That's purple cabbage. Mm -hmm. And I'll just take, a, again, a little bit of this to give me the colors of carnival on my fish. Now this is a, this is a great, this is a great dish 
when company comes, because you can still talk about Mardi Gras, even right, though Mardi right. Gras is gone. The foods of carnival, the colors of carnival, what do they mean? And now a little butter. You see that butter? I'm going to finish it with a couple little pats. Just kind of throw a couple little pats down in there. And I'm going to, a little touch of salt, a little touch of pepper. Now, if you give me that nice uh, platter right there, I'm going to just kind of melt this butter down a little bit. Kind of get that butter melting down. That butter's going to just give it that sweet cream flavor. And I'm going to take it like that and just kind of. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to go on to my plate like that with some of that. There you go. That's the bed for my little, that's, this is the float. This is the float. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then you can put it down right up there and I'm gonna, let's go in with the fish. I'm gonna Ooh, put yeah. the fish right on top of it like this. And now this is a double portion, so it would go up to the table. Well, I say a double portion, not for you or I. <laughs> uh, and then of course we can come back and sprinkle just a little bit more of the basil and thyme on top of it. Just treating a simple fish, uh, say a simple fish, one of our best fish. You can even put a little hollandaise sauce on. You can even get hollandaise in the store nowadays. Now, doesn't that look like carnival? Mm, I'm Fit telling for you. A king, you know huh? what I got to say about that? They uh, say hail Rex. I say hail yes. <laughs> Trout Rex. You can make it at home and be a hero. With Chef John Foltz, I'm Don Dubuque on Bayou Wild TV. Easy to do. Here's how I guarantee my crawfish tastes great every time. I use Louisiana Fish Fry brand seafood boil. Why do the pros use Louisiana Fish Fry seafood boil? Because the flavor is so good. It has more garlic, onion, paprika, lemon, and not too much salt. It has much better flavor. Louisiana Fish Fry brand seafood boil. Find the yellow bag and pour and boil for great crawfish every time. Hi, I'm Donnie Rouse. There are a lot of different reasons to shop at Rouse's. It's the people. Everybody that works here is just so nice. Our stores get delivery seven days a week. They have such a wide variety at Rouse's. Everything's in stock. I mean, everything. We use Rouse family recipes and ingredients found right here in the store. It's the food. Rouse's food tastes like homemade. And they're local. Like us. We also have great prices. That's the difference Rouse's makes. Closed captioning made possible by CETO.com. Become a member. Thanks for joining us for another edition of Bayou Wild TV. As a reminder, you can always catch our episodes on Cox Sports Television as well as YouTube. We also post them to our Facebook page and find fun pictures on Instagram as well. And be sure to tune in next week. We take you down to Plaquemines Parish for a visit with Captain Ryan Lambert as we talk about if you build it, they will come. And we're talking about ducks there and also make an exciting squirrel hunt late season with the dogs. And then we're going to take some of that duck and bring it back to Chef John Foles. He's going to make some sweet tea duck and you don't want to miss it. Drizzle over that duck like that and of course on the salad oh, itself. Now, now you see, you might want to you might want to take a piece of that well, duck. We're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. <laughs> but, and come have lunch with us while we tape the show at Morton Seafood Restaurant on the banks of the Chifuncta River in Madisonville. That's Monday, March 12th.